John's latest book is called The Light Behind Consciousness, and the subtitle is Radical Self-Knowledge and the End of Seeking. And the cover notes on the back of the book include this statement, What is unique about this book is that John probes more deeply into the ultimate nature of who we are at the most fundamental level. And the idea of the light behind consciousness presupposes that maybe this consciousness is not the final state or the eternal or natural state, yes? It's actually quite a simple idea, or it's a simple fact that we can look at. And in, 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 uh, a way to get into this would be uh, a pointer that I often use, and that and that is is that what you are, what you essentially are, must always be with you, because it's innately the essence of your identity and so and this is a way to 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 get to the essence of what is uh, real what is permanent what is what is abiding you know what is true so you can use that pointer to for example you know in coming back to immediate experience looking at certain things like thoughts or sensations and perceptions and kind of and noticing that they are constantly changing and and they arise and they set and they pass and and because they have that characteristic you know we're not going to grasp a hold of any one of those particular things and claim that that is the abiding truth of what I am and 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 so that's a that's a way of, of clearing away the brush so that we can come back and see well what is it that is constant what is it that is uh, continuous about my nature and and as we've talked about in one of the other talks, one of the things that you'll start to see is that in addition to all of these appearances, you've got this other factor in, in our experience, which is consciousness. And that is, you know, you notice that all of these thoughts and perceptions and experiences are occurring within this presence of consciousness. And, you know, we had a, a talk about that. And, and that's a way to start to get uh, closer in to the essence of things. And so we start to notice this nature of consciousness itself and start to get curious about that. And I think that's about where we ended up with some of the previous discussion. I noticed something in your book which really struck me, which is um, that the basis of all experience essentially is the sense I am. And that without the sense of I am, there can be no other experiences, as you say. And then you say you are beyond all experience, even the experience of I am. Mm-hmm. And I thought this this is um, this is really fantastic because what, in my view, what we've done, what you've done mostly <laughs> with these uh, this series of podcasts, is rather than try to um, go all the way down to the absolute core uh, right off the bat, um, there's a it seems that there's been a sensitivity to where people are. That is to say that that you don't try to leap to the beginning you kind of like where we are is in the middle and so you start where we are which is in the middle of it in the middle of life and living Mm -hmm. and then taking it back kind of stepping back stepping back stepping back to see what's upstream of this and then what's upstream of that which is upstream of the prior and so on and then coming down to I love what you said here you said at the core of the mind is an empty space a void through which the primordial, non-conceptual reality shines forth as consciousness. And, that, and then you say the whole world appears in the light of consciousness. Consciousness itself is a time-bound, phenomenal state, an appearance on that unconditioned source which is prior to consciousness. And then I think you really nail it down here, saying re- reality is a non-conceptual awareness that does not even know that it is. All we're doing here is we're looking more finely and more directly with with less conceptualizing at the natural state Mm -hmm. of what is present right now. We have experiences, thoughts, ideas, things that are arising and setting, and and we can look and realize that none of those are uh, changeless, none of those are constantly with us, and none of those are really that abiding essence of of what I am. Now one of the things too as 
to keep in mind, though, as, as we discussed, is that we are talking about non-duality, meaning that as we look very deeply at the truth of who we are, which is what we're doing now, but we can, we will, we then look back from that and realize that all of the things that appear are not to be seen as separate from that either. We're not making metaphysical distinctions here between, you know, ultimate realities that are somehow separated. So if we talk about objects and uh, say they come and go and that's not what I am, and then we, we look a little deeply, more deeply into the nature of consciousness. We are, we're not making an actual ultimate distinction between those, but we're trying to highlight what is essential, you know, like the substratum or the, the substance of which all of these things are, you know. So all these objects of consciousness are only appearances and displays and manifestations of that consciousness, and so that's 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 important to keep in mind. So we're looking, we're looking, we're diving below the the mere appearance to see what is the source of the appearance and what is the nature of the appearance, and what what's it made out of? Where does it come from? And so that first part of that looking is is bringing into our recognition this nature or principle of consciousness itself, and that consciousness is just that knowing that I am. It's that sense of being present and aware that, you know, it's, it's like you wake up in the morning out of a state of deep sleep in which you are not conscious in the usual sense of that word. And there's a moment where consciousness or knowing that I am appears as an experience. And that's what I'm talking about consciousness. So this is nothing esoteric or or mystical or something that we all don't have daily experience of. So there's that point in there where suddenly I know that I am and there's that recognition of being present in consciousness as an experience. And, and like you were saying, that in order to experience anything else, I've, I, must, I must be there. In other words, I, I must know that I am. And so that's the, that's, a, that's the same description of that experience where you know, to have the experience of objects in the world and, and all that stuff, I have to be there, and this principle of conscious knowing must must be present. And and so what we're doing is we're looking back to that and, and taking a, a really fine uh, look directly into understanding what that is. And so as we talked about it at length before, but we're seeing that all of the experiences that are in consciousness are actually not separate and they have no independent nature apart from that consciousness. And in essence, they actually are that consciousness because they, they can have no, uh, they cannot be experienced outside of that principle of consciousness. So that's, that's where we, uh, we got to previously. And, and what you see at that point that whereas previously we assumed that what we are is a body and a mind, you know, in a world of appearances, that's the concept that we have. But from the position of consciousness, you realize that the world and the bodies and the minds and all the experiencing is all contained within that conscious knowing itself. And um, it's like Nizargadatta used to say, a, a, a statement that he made that, that I found very potent, very profound. He said, you know, when you see that you are not the body and the mind, then the entire universe becomes your body. Mm. Because everything is the body or the, the display of the consciousness itself. So we come back and we notice what I am is this... Uh, deeper conscious principle itself. And then this notion that I am just limited to a particular body-mind, that concept is undermined and is no longer believed. And what I see at that stage is that, oh, you know, instead of being this particular body-mind, what I truly am is this consciousness which is illuminating and infusing and supporting the entire appearance itself. And and that's the, that's the view that we come to with that. And But what Nisargadatta said, and, and others have said, like Buddha too, was is that that consciousness itself, if we start to look at that and start, and start to examine that, 
we'll see that that itself appears. That is also something that begins and ends. And it's very, very simple to see that is because when you wake up in the morning and there's that knowing that I am as an experience, that has a beginning. Mm. And, you know, if you, when you go to sleep later, that conscious experience uh, settles down. Or let's say you go under anesthetics or some other experience like that. So, you know, it's, we can't really say that that experience of being conscious in that way is actually continuous. It's actually an experience like anything else. And what we find, though, is it's the basic or primordial or first experience. It's the necessary ground for any other subsequent experiencing. And so it's a very special and very important experience because without that basic experience of knowing that I am, clearly you cannot have any other experience. But what we're doing now is we're going to see, well, but is that truly what I am? You know, is that the essence of what I am? And and sometimes, you know, when we first see this, there's kind of an expansion. There's kind of a, a, a feeling of vastness where the identity shifts to this uh, sense of presence or the sense of consciousness in that sense. And we might feel, oh, this is it. This is what I am. Yeah. Yeah, I remember those kinds of experiences and saying, and kind of what came on the heels of that is, oh boy, this is it. But yeah. the problem was that it was temporary. But if that was it, quote, it, you know, why did Nizhigadatta name his book prior to consciousness? Exactly. So that's what well, I was saying, is that, that to, to realize that even consciousness is temporary. And so, and I mean, you know, and I was saying it there, and it, it's clear from looking at this, uh, the easiest experience to see that is, is that this, this, uh, we can see it every day when we wake up and this principle of consciousness uh, appears. And, and, and the interesting question, though, is that if we recognize that itself, which it clearly does, it clearly appears, uh, and, and there are times in our experience when that is not present. And there's a knowing that we, we all know that intuitively, that, that this consciousness in manifestation, let's say, if we want to say it that way, is not something that we can count on that is constant or that is always with us. And so if we continue to apply that uh, investigation where we're saying, you know, what I am must be always with me because it, it is the essence of my deepest identity, and I cannot lose my identity, then this experience of being conscious as a state is not that. It is not that constancy. And so the, the question or the, 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 uh, the thing that we can consider as we look at that is, and this is what this is getting to, is in what is that consciousness coming and going? Uh -huh. Because we talk about it coming and going. We say, for example, I'm conscious, I'm unconscious. There are times when I'm awake, there are times when I'm asleep, and so on. There are times, you know, I was, I was awake, and then they gave me the anesthetic, and then, you know, I, there was no consciousness, and then I, you know, and then I, I came back from that, and I was aware. So, so in, in another way of looking, there's also a very clear recognition of all of this happening. You know, each of us knows this. We can speak of these experiences. And so what it, what it gets to is, basically, there is something more fundamental here that is truly what we are, that is not defined by either of those states. It's not a duality. It's not something, you know, we, we talk about consciousness and then unconsciousness. So we're talking about an, a state in duality or that knowing that I am. You know, but there are times that I'm not knowing that I am. All right. You know, when you're in deep sleep, I, you know, you are not knowing that you are. It, that experience is simply not available. Now, here's the funny thing about it, though. But you are there. You know, there is a basic presence there because when that waking occurs, when that arises, when that appears, it emerges uh, upon something that is there on which it can emerge. In other words, the substratum there. And that's what is there in deep sleep. You know, that is what is there when I'm not knowing that I am. And yet, 
there is still a fundamental being that is there. And so we're so all we're really doing here is we're fine tuning, really looking very, very closely. What actually is this nature that I am? And uh, so there, that's 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 what we're getting to. So so then what's what can happen with this is we start to relax this identification that what I am is this experience of being conscious. And there's a, there's a knowing as we look at this that that actually does not represent the, the deepest perspective. Uh-huh. And that's why Buddha and that's why Nisargadatta and that's why others, and, and if we look in our own experience, we can see that that's why, that's why they say that. You know, that's why Buddha said that the consciousness that arises in this body mind is not the unconditioned. So, because we're, you know, again, it's because it's impermanent and because it appears, you know, just like all of the other things that we were examining. So that's, so what is it? So the question is, or what we're getting to is, well, what is that source? What is that background? What is that innate presence at the deepest level, which is even cognizing? or recognizing the coming and going of the experience of consciousness, of knowing that I am. Yeah. I think it's good to underscore, too, that that, that you're not making a distinction like a separate objective difference between consciousness and the absolute. No, well, just like you know, just like when we saw the objects, uh-huh. and then we realized the objects and the consciousness of them are are not separate. All right. So when we look at this experience of consciousness, that is also not something separate or independent from the fundamental source either. So this is just a, a way of pointing, a way of of clarifying the experience, but. Somebody, uh, somebody asked Maharaj one time. He, he said to him, uh, "Well, you're always talking about consciousness and prior to consciousness, and are you saying, you know, are you saying that there's a difference there?" Uh-huh. He said, "No, not at all. There is no difference because that consciousness itself is just a manifestation or an appearance upon that prior absolute principle of our fundamental being. And so, you know, we never experience them as separate. We never experience any kind of metaphysical split. So, so we're going to see that there, you know, uh, it's just this way of pointing is just a way of clarifying the, the essence of things. And then, you know, so, so, so when he said, you know, even though they were saying to him that he was always, uh, you know, talking about the difference between consciousness and this pure awareness or this pure absolute, but when, you know, but when looked at directly, you know, and asked, well, what is the difference? Well, there is no difference between us. <laughs> Try to put so that what, in mind. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, even right now, the thing to see this, so it's 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 a direct experience here. Yeah. Is that I can pause right now and reflect and know that I am. So I, I can recognize the fact that I am, that recognition, you know, that experience of knowing that I am. Uh-huh. But whether that whether I do that or not, or whether that reflection occurs, it makes no fundamental difference to what I am. My being itself, my fundamental presence, just shines straight through, irrespective of of whether I am thinking I am, whether I'm knowing that I am, whether that thought is appearing or not. I simply am what I am, and. Uh, and that's why it's called when we talk try to point to that fundamental nature you know it's pointed out as non conceptual awareness yeah it's not an object it's not a thing it's not a subtle experience it's not an appearance it's not a state it's not something that you can detect or grasp a hold of as any kind of subtle thing and it's not the no 
the thought that I am or the experience that I am that is also is also an appearance is also not that non-conceptual uh, innate uh, true nature and so and that's uh, and the pointers and the words can only go so far there it's and the the the, the easiest I mean, an easy way to see this is it comes back to something we've discussed about just pausing all the conceptualizing, pausing yeah. all the thoughts. Yeah. And there is a pure, naked, aware, radiant presence that is absolutely obvious, that is just what is here. It's just the, it's the core of what's going on here. And... That's just simply radiating its own nature. Whether we think about it, whether we conceptualize about it, whether there's any objects, whether there's no objects, it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with conscious or unconscious, or whether I remember it or don't remember it. It's there as this source in which all of those things themselves are displaying on, on that. So the pure awareness is not conscious or unconscious. You know, it's not an object or a subject. It's not a thing and it's not the absence of a thing. It's just what is. You know, it's just that. And uh, so I had, a, I had an analogy in that book that I, I think perhaps captured this and it was talking about Imagine uh, the sun simply in space, you know, like with no other objects. Imagine that you are that sun. And that sun is just simply shining into the infinity of space and there's nothing else there. So there's nothing else recognized. There's nothing else seen. There's no object. It doesn't even see its own light because there's no reflection. There's, no, there's nothing that it can even shine upon. And that's what... That's that pure awareness that, that sometimes it doesn't know itself as an object. It just simply is that doubtless base of all experience. Now, if an object appears in space, that light will reflect off of that, and there will be an experience of the light. You know, there will be a recognition at some moment of time of this appearance of the reflected light. And we could say, you know, that, that, that appearance comes and it goes like that. And that's like the objects that we're experiencing. But, but with or without that object, the source, the pure light, the pure radiance itself is undisturbed. You know, it doesn't begin. It doesn't end. It doesn't have a shape. It doesn't have a size. It doesn't have any particular boundary or way of grasping it conceptually it's just that uh, essence that you know and and it really is what you are right now it's that in you like if i say to you do you know that you are do you recognize your sheer presence itself and there's a clear absolutely doubtless knowing of that fact yeah it's something um, i'm reminded of a line from the Tao Te ching uh, where the sage says, uh, to know the always so is to be illumined. And exactly. I like that because what's always so is has, uh, relatively speaking, the quality of light. Like, um, without light, there couldn't be darkness. Without That's light, right. nothing could appear. And, you know, for example, and, you know, and, that, and they use that light and darkness. And, and you know, it, even that's kind of instructive because, uh, you know, let's say that uh, you were sitting in a room and it was illumined and there was light. And there was a recognition of that. And then, and then the light gets turned off and suddenly you're sitting in darkness. And there's a recognition of that darkness. Well, that pure awareness, is it light or is it dark? Neither. Or both. Either. Yeah, because it's embracing and encompassing all, you know, both both of the dualities, and uh, the light is coming and going. The experience of light is coming and going, and yet that which contains them is 
completely undisturbed and remains straight through. It, re it remains through all all sides of the duality. And so that's what that's what I'm pointing to here about this. Uh, if we take that to, for example, uh, waking and deep sleep, something like that. So like waking would be this illumination of knowing objects and perceiving all these things in the light of being present and aware in, in terms of you know, being conscious. But then in deep sleep, it's lights out for the consciousness. You know, there's, there's no object being perceived. There's not even a knowing that I am. There's no consciousness as we normally think of it. Yeah, you know, the most dramatic experience of that in my life was that um, when I had open heart surgery and they put me out and I was out for six hours. Mm -hmm. uh, but the experience was that, um, you know, they have you count down, right, from 100. So I'm counting down 199, 98, 97, awake in the recovery room. That was the experience. There was absolutely just, no, no sense of any passage of time, yet six hours had gone by. And the phrase that comes to mind is that I, like an I am, was dead to mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. Really, in a fundamental sense, being dead, but being aware somehow of being dead. I don't know quite how to put it into words, but that's as close as I can get. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, as we're speaking of it here, what, you know, that consciousness itself, because of the drugs and all that, that consciousness was just simply snuffed out. Yeah. I mean, you know, there was not, you were counting, and when that consciousness uh, subsided, uh, all the experiencing in that consciousness, including the body and the counting and everything that happened in the surgery and the world and everything like that, was absolutely uh, not present. Not there, there was no experiencing. Why? Because the consciousness it wasn't there. Exactly. Now, that, 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 that consciousness in manifestation was, uh, you know, was uh, caused to subside through the drugs. And I mean that's just why that just that shows why this particular pointer has a practical meaning and is helpful in understanding our experience because what you can see there is oh that consciousness is not permanent obviously I mean your your experience shows that that you know re being present recognizing objects and all that stuff was was not was not available anymore so how could that be you know the the essence you know the continuous changeless nature that you know a lot of the traditions are pointing to reality as constant and changeless ever present uh -huh. well that conscious that experience of consciousness was certainly not changeless and ever present exactly and yet there and was yet, something changeless and ever present yeah and that is what when we have to use language it's it's hard to talk about but that is that I'll take a stab at it. Yeah, great. That's that pure non-conceptual awareness that recognizes even the coming and going of that consciousness. And, yeah, because and that something, a, something new that there was counting and then something new that there was waking up in the recovery room. Yeah. And you can see this another another way. that Because I mean, this stuff is all kind of self-evident. Everyday, ordinary experience. If you talk to somebody and say, you know, were you having any thoughts in deep sleep last night? And they'll say no. Well, you know, how do you know? <laughs> there, there is something that that knows. Even when I'm not knowing anything, you know, even when I'm not uh, even conscious that I am, there's there's always that inescapable background that is very clearly uh, aware at the most fundamental level. And that awareness is not personal. That awareness, if we call it that, is not uh, uh, in duality. You know, it's not generated by some uh, body-mind coming into a conscious experience. You know, like, or if I ask you, you know, Charlie, before the sperm and the egg came together and that body was formed, were you conscious? You know, did you know what was going on? Well, it's an interesting question because the insight here was, I know that I was not conscious. 
That's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, how do I know that? <laughs> yeah. well, and that's that's a beautiful statement. That's a very simple statement that sums this whole thing up. You know, when when it's pointed to, a, you know, reality is unconditioned. Reality is not time bound. Reality cannot be defined as as even that uh, temporary sense of consciousness. And you say, uh, you know, that you even knew or that you know that you were not conscious. That, that what that right there is what is pointed to as let's say the absolute or the final or the or the abiding uh, true nature that in you which al- allows that statement to be made and there's that's not a complicated statement you know exactly what it means yeah. you know exactly what you're talking about because you know if our nature is to be defined as consciousness then you know it's not changeless it's not eternal it's not unconditioned and so how, how could that really be what what non-duality and what these uh, traditions are actually talking about how could that be unborn and timeless and spaceless and and all that but that when when you say I know that I wasn't consciousness that I wasn't conscious that itself is what is unborn and timeless and and unconditioned and that is the no thing that you know when, when we talk about no thing or the that emptiness in that sense yeah that thing which is absolutely undefined and yet it's here and so clear because that which you that in you even right now that knows or recognizes the fact of not being conscious is that's that's what you are you know that's the essence of things and that, and that you can say on direct evidence, that is not coming and going. Absolutely. That is not appearing as a state. That is not um, going anywhere. And that's not doesn't even that that does not have any uh, size, any shape, any uh, any dimension. And yeah, you know, and this gets actually kind of vast and very very profound because what you realize is. The consciousness itself appears within you, you know, and and we we saw before like the world and the universe and all the experience is actually in that consciousness, and yet then when you look, you realize even that experience of consciousness, that first concept or that first experience, that sense of I am, that itself is just a little blip that's appearing in the in this no thing primordial reality and so consciousness itself is just like a ripple uh, arising in this primordial state that itself is just coming and going like a flash like a firefly flashing in and out of experience even that even the consciousness in which everything else appears itself is just a small minute experience just Flashing on, flashing off, awake, asleep, appearing, disappearing, and it's very, you know, so you can kind of get a sense of your nature as that vast, absolute. If you have to use some word on that, that prior to consciousness state. You know, if this consciousness itself is just this flash within that absolute that you truly are, you know, then even to be identified as consciousness even that concept that's falling away now and then where do we stand we're standing as that prior to consciousness absolute yeah. so I kind of like to describe that as if we imagine this absolute as an ocean this, this is a poetry but you know as an ocean a, a, like a flat you know kind of waveless ocean of, of the of that beyond manifestation and a wave appears like a single wave just ripples forth on that vast ocean that's like the appearance of I am that's the appearance of consciousness and in that little wave all the universes all the bodies all the minds all time all space everything is contained in that little wave 
And uh, but then, you know, from the perspective of your true nature, you realize that that wave itself is just arising and setting itself as a phenomenon. And uh, and that's what and that's the what I would call in terms of this way of talking is the final reality, you know, is the ultimate reality itself. And that wave may come and go, and I and my contention with looking at this is it surely does. Yes. Because our experience in daily life reveals this to be true. But that that on which the wave of consciousness appears and subsides, that cannot go anywhere. You know, that cannot arise and set because it, it doesn't uh, it's, it doesn't. It doesn't have a beginning. It doesn't have an end. It doesn't appear. It never comes. It never goes. And if there is something that is absolute and unconditioned and absolutely unchanging, uh, that's that's what it that's what it is. You know, and that's what you are. And you know, that's that's why when they say you are that, you know, we're not. We don't want to limit that to some particular experience like a body, mind, or or the world, or or something like that, and and not even to that uh, principle of consciousness, because you know to say I am the consciousness in which the world appears is a very vast view. It's a very quote high experience. But if we, and many of us have had that experience, like a very transcendental experience. But have you ever noticed that that didn't stay either? Then it's just another state. Call it the fourth state or Taria or whatever. It's still a state that comes and passes. So we so so we just want to take it uh, uh, the the last little step back and realize what is that state coming and going with yeah. uh, within and that you know that's when they say you are that and that and and then say well that's what you actually are and that's what you are right now you know you're in that quote state. Never been out of it, actually. How, how, could, how could you get out of what's eternal? <laughs> yeah, and what you are. You know, how can you get out of what you truly are? Now, you know, if somebody came along with a with a baseball bat and hit you on the head. You know, you'd you'd lose the consciousness. <laughs> so, you know, if 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 in this non-duality, if in this looking, you know, we come up with this uh, idea that what I am is this consciousness. I mean, clearly, it's a it's a vast view, and it's certainly uh, you know, in terms of the previous concept that I am uh, the body mind, you know, that's it's a much uh, much more profound uh, view of things. But but it's like Nizagadatta said in one of his uh, books. He said, you know, a lot of people come up to that experience of presence or consciousness or that feeling that I am, and he was often pointing to that. But he said, you know, often they stop with that. And and they say, well, this is what I am. And you know, he makes it very, very clear uh, that that's not what he's pointing to as the fundamental reality. He says, no, you're prior to that. And uh, so why not? You know, I mean, I I was uh, inspired by his uh, teachings and other teachings like Buddhism and things like that. And you know, we might, uh, you know, I I can't see any advantage to not paying attention. You know, to what they were saying, and uh, but also checking with our own experience, because you know, I'm not when I talk about this, I'm not talking about this as a um, concept or as a an interesting th a teaching that somebody taught. I mean, you know, this is this comes out of our own direct looking at our experience, as I think we're doing as we're talking about this. Yes, exactly. And that so, that experience is incontrovertible. I mean, the only thing that that can be known directly is in our own direct experience, and that experience certainly is non-conceptual. Exactly. Now, you know, from that analogy of the wave on the ocean, is you know, where we're talking about that ocean is like the pure, you know, substratum, and then you've got this wave that arises and sets. Well, you know, is that way? That's where you know. I mean, the the point there is that is that wave something separate or actually independent from its source? And it's not. It is not. And that's why you know uh, we can't. You know, you can't take the wave 
and somehow pull it apart from the ocean and, and make the claim that there's actually an independent reality that that, that these that these things are somehow divided and so so what that shows us is that this abiding non-conceptual primordial reality that is never changed and this flashing forth of knowing that I am as that experience that those are not separate they are not divided they are not fundamentally somehow different from each other but you could say and sometimes this is said is that you know one is the unmanifest or you know the the the, the substratum and the other is like the manifest you know the, the manifesting of it like the one essence the one substance the one core reality uh, uh, either unmanifest or manifested you know but that, these, these are all concepts and it's not you know it's not that really important but right just, yeah another concept that comes to mind here is that if you turn a light on and off uh, the light flashes on and off you're talking about flashing but yes. the flashing on and off depends upon the existence of the electricity exactly and yeah. that electricity isn't uh, isn't light or dark exactly and that's that's an analogy to say well what we are so we are the, so however we want to say that you know that we're the uh, our true nature is the source uh, of 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 uh, you know like like if I'm if I'm present and I'm aware of something and then maybe at another point I'm not aware of that thing there's like a knowledge of something and then there's an ignorance of something so let's say that I'm you know I'm not aware of something but there's a knowing that I'm not aware of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that knowing, that ever-present knowing, is even there when you don't know anything. You know that kind of thing. So, yeah. uh, and this is all just different ways of describing what we are. We are that constant presence that can never be doubted or denied. That is the background and constancy of all possible experiences, and all those experiences in their essence are not independent or separate even of you know even of the consciousness itself or of the source of which the consciousness is uh, from which it is appearing as well clearly uh, these words cannot begin to uh, capture this truth that we are that is prior to the language prior to all the concepts how can you get and, to what already is yeah and you know just so just to make this clear or just to underscore this and it's kind of important if we talk about awareness or and consciousness or prior to consciousness or whatever it is all of those distinctions all of those pointers are themselves concepts so we can't even begin to make such distinctions unless you know we're doing it conceptually so that's why these are all very provisional and they're all in very imprecise and, and not and not and not fully accurate and so and and uh, so we don't want to get hung up or too um, somehow committed to uh, these conceptual uh, descriptions either so the whole purpose of the investigation was to relinquish this clinging to conceptualizing but and in that and all the all, all you can do at that stage is you could it's just a pointing to that which is present beyond any doubt without the conceptualizing you know what what is it that when there is no grasping at a word or a concept so even when we're not thinking about consciousness or who I am or awareness or the absolute you know which are you know concepts at some level but we've done the investigation we've looked at these things we've seen the uh, conceptual nature uh, of the mind and there's a recognizing that that's not the fundamental truth of things that's not what I truly am and in that pause there all the cons all of the grasping at the concept basically subsides 
I uh, heard a metaphor for that once, like snow thrown into a roaring furnace. Yeah. The concepts are just obliterated in this flashing of the light of awareness. Exactly. And, you know, and that's, so that's what we're, you know, getting into here is like, you know, without the concept, of knowing that I am or not knowing that I am or any label of what the absolute or what reality might be, even without that, just the immediate non-conceptual sense, that the just recognition of what is. What is this uh, nature of, 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 it's hard, you can't describe it, but just the sheer being itself that, that, and and all and I can you know try to point to that and we can see that and, we can, and it's you know and everybody should look at that and, and really see it but there's just this clear uh, obviously present knowing that is that cannot be contained it, it, it cannot be uh, labeled as any particular thing it's just a vivid awake. Uh, Doubtless, very, very solid and unchanging space. Uh, you know, it's, uh, and, and you can start to see where all these metaphors, you know, that they're kind of coming out of trying to, to, to describe that. And, and, uh, you know, and it's perfect. You know, one of the one of the Buddhist ones that they often use is when they they kind of come up to that level, and they talk about the pacification of concepts or the, the relinquishment of conceptual thought is that the one of the ones that's often used is um, unconditioned peace you know as this nirvana or this you know freedom it's just like right now in our experience without the concept that that rich deep expansive you know absolutely unchanging endless peace that is intensely awake you know just solid as a rock you know and just just indescribably aware and uh, you know we can get a taste of that and recognize that and start to say is to you know, because it's like you notice, you start to notice that, and it's like anything else in life. When it's pointed out, and there's a noticing of that, suddenly you begin to see it, and there's a fami there's a familiarity with that. And what you're going to find is that's not coming and going. That never leaves you. You know, it's never apart from you. In uh, waking, in thinking, in functioning, in dreaming. In deep sleep, every uh, it's 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 absolutely unchanging and without break at all at at, at all times. And it's you know, that that's where this feeling of unconditioned and primordial, you know, that's and absolute you know reality itself. Absolute reality. That's beautiful. It's kind of like a like a crystal, like a, almost like a, a crystal uh, ball in which the universe is inside, like projected inside this lucid, you know, clear uh, ball. And no matter what goes on inside that, no matter whether the images are there or if they shift, if they're good, if they're bad, or whatever they do, nothing can ever exist outside or somehow independent of that context of that clear space itself in which it you know, and that would be like this primordial non-conceptual awareness that is just uh, it's infusing every moment it's it's containing every experience and it really is all that is going on because you know those images and appearances and states and things, they have no independent nature, they have no independent substance, that they, they cannot be separated and stand outside of that. And, you know, we talked about that uh, in one of the other talks about, you know, this uh, self-shining, ever-fresh, non-conceptual presence awareness, 
you know, that that's all there is. And that was a, a very profound way somebody came up with that, of trying, you know, of pointing to that. And, yeah, great. Well, you have given everyone lots to not think about. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, the train whistle blows, the wind stirs the blinds, and here we are, forever unborn. <laughs>